We are unceasingly in the presence of angels wherever we move because intelligences of this purest and highest creation are carrying out the will of God in the most minute as well as the most major circumstances and undertakings. Whenever we are in special need, we receive particular angelic observation and assistance. When we confront sacred holidays, we are under their dispensation and within their presence. When we are in significant places of great power, we are in their presence too. When we confront a challenge, when we are in the presence of danger or evil, we are also within the observation and the helpfulness of the Holy Ones of God who strive in those moments of our strategic testing to be of vital assistance to us. Were we to know of the countless ministrations we are offered from these servers in the inner world, we would be aghast because so frequent, so numerous are their interventions in our behalf. An angel in his presence is a luminous being and there is that about him which is distinct from man's evolution in that he is always so much larger than man larger and greater in mentality, in spirituality, and in might. The youngest angel is tremendously greater than man. And only when man comes to sainthood does he begin in purity to approach the purity of the youngest angel. And there are angels who are equal to our masters, and there are some who, of course, are more than masters, who are like the lords of our own line of evolution and beings who are so advanced in angelhood that they are given the term of eons. And so all the way up the line of angelhood, we meet these beings who are so exceedingly beautiful, if we could give them that adjective. One distinguished feature about them, in addition to their size and their luminosity, is that they are enfolded and covered by garments of essence. And this essence is in unceasing motion. That is why we presume artists have given them wings, artists on earth, because they have telepathically observed this motion within the angel auras and imagined that these were wings in operation. But that is not true. Angels move with the speed or the rapidity of thought. They have no need of wings. To me, the most outstanding feature of an angelic presence is his eyes. They are larger than man's eyes, and they are filled with clarity. They also have the quality of insight, penetrating insight, but that kind that does not make you feel as though you were being examined with uh, curiosity to any extent, but simply with an insight of the type which desires to understand and therefore to be a means of greater helpfulness.